Welcome to Invercargill in New Zealand's Deep South, home to Cycling Southland and the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Now in its 64th year, the SBS Tour is one of the country's longest running sporting events and the most prestigious title in New Zealand cycling. The list of past winners is a who's who of New Zealand road racing and it remains the toughest test of the Kiwi calendar. 102 riders, 17 teams, 7 days, 836 kilometres and only one winner. Last year's SBS Bank Tour was a comeback story for the ages. The famous Southland crosswinds bared their teeth and rain jackets were essential on the early stages. Australian Jensen Plowright and track star Campbell Stewart took early honours and a taste of the yellow leader's jersey. But the Queen stage to Coronet Peak would once again turn out to be pivotal. Base Solution Racing's Max Jones hit the base of Coronet first. A brave attempt off the front ended three kilometres from the finish line, with debutante Ada Freire flying up the climb to claim history as the Tour's first Mexican stage winner. The following day, summer conditions arrived for the stage to the top of Bluff Hill. The day became a battle between the top general classification hopefuls. Defending champion Vink gave it his best, but Mexican rider Freire made his move and for the second day in a row would not be denied, powering to another impressive stage win. With the odds stacked heavily against Vink, the crosswinds returned for Friday's stage to Gore. In what would prove to be the defining stage of the 2019 Tour, the placemakers team timed their move to perfection and blew the Tour apart. Nick White claimed the stage win, but the real winner was Vink, who took a lead of two minutes into the final day. In the end, an impressive time trial meant Vink could largely enjoy the final jaunt to Invercargill's Queen's Park. Dylan Kennett claimed the final sprint finish victory, but Michael Vink joined a rarefied group of riders who have taken repeat wins in SBS Bank Tour of Southland, and in the process sets himself up for a shot at an historic three-peat in 2020. As is tradition, the 2020 SBS Tour started with the team's time trial prologue, a short four kilometre mad dash around Queen's Park in central Invercargill to decide the first yellow jersey wearer of Tour Week. Blustery conditions greeted the 17 teams, who departed the start at two minute intervals, with On Your Bike 1.5 metres first off the line. Team Business South, featuring last year's sprint ace Tom Sexton of Southland, set the early running, smashing the five minute mark. Base Solutions Racing featuring three track cycling world champions in Campbell Stewart, Jordan Kirby and Regan Goff put pressure on the Business South time but ultimately had to settle for third 18 seconds back. As the win strengthened, the final team away, two-time defending champion Michael Vink's Transport Engineering South and Tally's team were left as the only challenger, but crossed the line four seconds in arrears, meaning Sexton will wear yellow for Monday's opening road stage from Invercargill to Gore. Being a Southlander in the eye jersey nights, no, it's something special, you know, we all grow up watching the tour and you know, you'll, you'll see the, the people before us, you know, like I grew up watching like Hayden Rolson and Yellow, so it's really cool to be able to wear the jersey even just for one day, or if I can hold it for more, yeah, it's, it's very special. Yeah, big change for the track squad this year with uh, COVID-19, we haven't been overseas, so uh, normally we come in here pretty underdone, so this year we've come in uh, with some pretty peak performances, so I think, yeah, watch the track boys and yeah, we'll be knocking up this race. Yeah, it's been a long year for sure. We started off with a bang and uh, yeah, obviously winning the World's Champs was a big high in my career and then pretty much since then it's been very uneventful so it's been a long time waiting for this race and just to be here is pretty exciting and I think everyone in New Zealand has been looking forward to this tour for a long time so it's going to be a good week for sure. We haven't been like, I guess, racing at the high intensity with different athletes around the world and but for us, we kind of just stayed here and we trained hard, we knuckled down and there's, I mean, the lockdown, we were able to get out on the bike and do as much as we can and I think it's kind of changed the way that we've done it for a little while and come in with, I guess, more endurance and being able to really focus on the little things without the distractions of heading away and travelling and racing. The weather is typical Southland weather. It's um, raining out there and it looks like the wind's going to get up. Expecting a few crosswinds, so just be making that front bunch and being up there with the GC boys going for that stage one. It's a 
here we are with 102 riders, 17 teams for the 2020 edition. Well, Doug, we would never have thought a few months ago we would be here today. Yeah, it's been one of those years, Julian, and it's just uh, fantastic to actually be running this year's SBS Bank Tour. Michael Vink, last year's winner, he'll be anxiously awaiting the start, but a lot of new faces, a lot of new squads, and a wonderful thing that we're even starting this year's race, isn't it? So the riders today to face 151 kilometres as they head up towards east and south and into Gore. Traditionally this was held on the Friday, but this year, Doug, they're bringing it forward to the Monday and putting the Lumsden stage instead onto the Friday. Yeah, really exciting this year, isn't it, Julian? The SBS Bank Tour has got a lot of the same stages we've grown used to, but with the changing of the order, like you say, it really disrupts the pattern, and the riders do have to restructure and remodel their thinking. So with the addition of the Remarkables Hill Climb as well, it's going to be a super exciting week of racing. Also amongst the field this year, a lot of deputants, a lot of riders here facing their first seven days of racing in this SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Some young guys just coming through the junior ranks, stepping up into this elite level, should make for some very interesting racing with the experience, the likes of the Vinks and Co. Yeah, that's right. And, and of course, this is this first opportunity and the first stage for everyone to roll out. You can still see here we're coming down a Layard Street, so it's very, very early days in the race. But once again, all of these stages are determined by early moves, taking the preems, and you can see these guys are really, really on the hunt. Yes, the first of the preems of the day. Of course, the Harcourt Sprint Ace. It's one of the many classifications up for grabs for these riders where they can pick up points, three, two and one. A few time bonuses for a few of them as well, which could make all the difference. As we know, every year it's been very close quarter racing. Yeah, very close. And, and once again, you can see the, the back of the peloton there was cruising along having something to eat. Not so at the front of the race. These guys are really, really digging in right from the get-go. There's 33, Matt Zinovich, the local rider from the Vet for Farm team. He is just dynamic, always on the front at the start of this race. This guy's got some horsepower, and I really would put a circle around him for being one of the Southlanders that could do well, eh? Yes, he's one of about a dozen Southlanders competing this year, always keen to go off the front. Jordan Kirby, not so sure he wants to be there, but of course he is a man that is the former World Individual Pursuit Champion when he rode for Australia. Now he's uh, seen, the, seen the light and has joined the New Zealand Elite Squad here for the track, and there's a number of them down. He's been put on to the front here for the base racing team. Yeah, the, the conditions you can see, we start in rain, the sun comes out, it's windy one minute, it eases off the next, and these riders will really be trying to work out what, what's what and what conditions they're going to be in. Here's young Zinovich from the Vet for Farm team having a, a bit of sustenance early on, but this is very, very early days. Typical Matt Zinovich hunting points for the sprint ace. Yes, the riders will be very aware of this man. Of course, he's worn a yellow jersey. He's worn the sprint ace, the king of the mountains. This is a guy who know, they know is a big threat when it comes to the tour, so they'll keep a very close eye on him. There's the Michael Vink transport engineering tallies team controlling the front of the group. They'll be just trying to roll things along and make sure that these front riders aren't getting too far away. You can see further back here the Black Spoke Pro Cycling Academy are starting to make their presence felt as well. They'll be making sure that none of this gets too far out, wanting to control the race towards the start of the stage, Julian. Yes, a lot of experience with those two teams, of course, Doug. When you look at the likes of James Oram and Aaron Gate, two former winners of 2013 and 16 in that Black Spoke Pro Academy team, joined here, as you said, by the Michael Vink team, has got the local man Hamish Keese, James Harvey, of course, in the yellow last year as we approach Winton, the 30k township out of Invercargill. Jordan Kirby, the base solutions rider, and Matt Zinovich from Vet for Farm still hunting those sprint preems here in Winton, and they'll be hoping that they can stay away, catch some more. So the field making their way on the other side of Winton here, up towards the Hedgehope area, where often the winds start to pick up, and of course. This was a decisive road last year and Michael Vink will be very aware of it as his team put the hammer down last year. Yeah, a lot of these climbs and a lot of these pinches we see on this stage are very exposed. The weather conditions are pretty good at this stage. You can see here the two leaders, Zinovich from Vet for Farm and Kirby. Kirby is starting to get a wee bit sore, having to do a wee bit of stretching. He's picked the wrong guy here for a lone breakaway. Zinovich will be out there all day if he can. 
Absolutely. Anyone that knows Zinovich, if you're out there with him, expect to put in some big miles on the front here. But Zinovich seems to be quite content to pull some large laps here. Looking at some of the splits here with his laps, he's doing over a minute odd on the front here while Kirby just rolling through when he needs to to try and support this man. How long will these two survive? I'm not too sure. This is the big, the big key, but once again, it really is just a matter of these guys staying away for as long as they can, staying away from these organised chases. You can see here the transport engineering, Tally's team at the front, the Black Spoke Pro Cycling Academy. There's some other teams starting to move their way up to the front, stay out of the wind, but there's a bit more of an organised chase now. I don't think we're going to see these guys stay away for too long. No, things look fairly calm back there. They'll know exactly the sort of time splits they're getting here from the commissaires on the motorbikes. So they'll know what to do. As we said, Kirby, just starting to struggle a bit, has decided that today I'm going to head back into the peloton. Now, what's our man out in front here going to do here? Knowing him pretty well, he'll probably just put the head down and continue on. Matt Zinovich has shown us time and time again, especially in the first few days of the previous editions of the SBS Tour, he is super strong. He does not give up Matt Zinovich, but I wonder whether the strategy is maybe going to cost him for further on and further days in the Tour. He's such a strong rider, but uh, Matt has got a limited amount of resources like all athletes. Absolutely. He was powering a big gear there too, Doug, and we know that can take its toll on the legs. Meanwhile, some legs that are starting to fire up back in the main peloton as a couple of these guys go off the front, and it looks like uh, right by the looks of it in the stripe-looking colours here, and Drage, the young man who's been under-19 uh, champion. He was uh, down recently for the Yunker Junior Tour, so he's fairly familiar with some of these roads around here. They're starting to put some inroads into the leader. Yeah, you talked about the debutantes at the start of this stage, Gillian. This is a, a, a typical case of that. And you can see these boys really, really sprinting over the top of this climb, coming into Matara for the rest of those um, hillpreme points for the King of the Mountains jerseys. That's the other competition within the competition that's going on. But it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is back in the peloton. Absolutely. As we said, races within the race. And this is one of the Majesco Hydraulics King of the Mountains. These two picking up second and third because we still have Zinovich off the front who will be doing the calculations whether he can stay clear and potentially pick himself up a couple of jerseys. Because I'd suggest he's done enough already for the Harcourt Sprint Ace for the day and he'll be well aware these two men are trying to get across. And of course, each of these climbs are worth varying points depending on the classification that's been given. It's very, very hilly. We can see here coming down into the township of Matara, it's it's very lumpy and bumpy. We've seen a lot of people use these hills as a springboard to win stages and ultimately crack the tour apart. This is the first day, remember Julian, so we've still got a lot of racing in these guys' legs over the rest of the week. Yes, the familiar roads for some of our viewers here. Of course, national championships have been held on here back in the early 60s, Southland Championships, you name it. And of course, for the Tour of Southland, it's been through here a number of times over the years as we see the big gears being pounded here on day one by Zinovich. What impact will that have on his body as we progress through the week? So the three of them making the junction now here, the trio, as they head down towards Matara, down on the descent, as you said, Doug, very, very quick down through here. They're having a look back to see if Zinovich is going to join them. They know that three men are better than two here, and it's Wright who's having a look over. Drage, the young man, he'll go along with whatever's suggested here. They want to use the strength of the man from Southland. Yeah, we'll be really reliant on whether Matt Zinovich still wants to stay away, of course. We're talking about him. There's an offer of some food. That's uh, a very, very sporting gesture. They'll be trying to get Zeno back on deck, give him a bit of food, give him a bit of drink, G him up and say, hey, mate, we still need you if we're going to stay away for the stage finish. Because at this point in the race, this is what these guys are starting to think about. Absolutely, they're getting to the sharp end of the race here and there's a potential stage win if they can hold out that chasing peloton who's been controlled by the top couple of teams here as they head through for the Falls Hotel sprint and Zeno's decided, thanks very much, you've allowed me to join you I think I'll just pick myself up a further three points here in the Harcourt sprint ace as the arm gives it away to say, come on boys, come on through that may be me done for the day yeah, we've got a wee bit of racing left in our, in, in, up our sleeve here too. So these boys have still got a lot of work and a couple of good climbs. The last one, of course, before you approach the finish, the Broughton Street Hill, which is always used as a springboard for the stage finish. So these boys are going to have to really regroup, get themselves organised. They're young guys. This is what stage racing is all about. 
So this a group of two now by the looks of it are going to make their way out of Matauri here for another one of the hill climbs. This one classified as a Cat 3, so it's worth six points as they head up towards it here. And it is the man Paul Wright in the Creation Science Mita Q, joined by central benchmakers Will Bike, Jack Drage. But here is the chaser, a man who was worn the king of the mountains, won it last year, Ollie Jones of the PowerNet team, a team we know can perform exceptionally well when it comes to the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. What is always intriguing to me, Julian, is to see which of the riders the teams choose. And we're talking some of the, the stronger squads send up the road in the early stages of this race. And in this case, they have seen Ollie Jones. He's a big hitter. Like you say, he's won King of the Mountains before. And this will be a real threat uh, once these guys regroup at the front of this race. This is going to provide some real firepower. Yes, with well, approximately 25 odd kilometres to go here for these riders, it is very much do or die time if they can take themselves a stage here. And what about this young man on the front? He's put in a power of work here. He'll love these climbs. As you said, the lumpy, bumpy nature as they head in towards east and south and further towards the stage finish into Gore, as he'll love every moment of that there as they're joined now by Jones, making this a very strong trio. The approach into Gore is always fast. You're coming off some of these descents of the climbs and the big left-hander into the start of Broughton Street. These chaps will be wanting to really gas it all the way to the bottom because you can see the peloton is breathing down their necks, Julian. This is really going to be tight. Yes, there's a good steep climb coming up here, but of course they'll be very aware that there is a fantastic descent down into the main street where you can open up a decent sort of a gap. And so Ollie Jones here, powering off the front, he's trying to pick up a few extra points for that KOM and potentially the stage victory, but they can feel them breathing down their necks. Yeah, the transport engineering tallies team, you can see Michael Vink has got them well drilled at the front of this race. It's going to be very, very close though. This Ollie Jones boy's been away for quite a while with his other two breakaway mates. He'll be feeling tight. He is a good climber, but there's all sorts of different things going to come along to catch him out just before the top of this hill. You can see here a couple of the Black Spoke Pro Cycling Academy riders just jumping away now. Yes, it's an interesting move for the two of them, and it looks like the familiar figures of two former winners. There we have James Oram, an international rider who's got himself off the front, and it's Aaron Gate that's going to come around him. So these two, of course, former winners of the tour, have made a bit of a bid here to try and get some time over the overall lead of Tom Sexton. Yeah, they're feathering things. You can see their gate just having a bit of a look over his shoulder to see where his mate was. He doesn't want to burst away and leave him behind because he really is going to need all the help he can get from the top of this climb through to the finish. It's very quick, but it is still a wee way to go. And Aaron Gate, you can see here, he's a class act. Aaron Gate's been a former world track champion, a former winner of this race. This guy's seriously got some experience. So he picks up the maximum points for the hill climb, but more importantly, he is after the stage victory at least one of them from their team, they don't really mind who, but they know this could be putting a dent into the chances of some of these other riders here because of course they'll have time bonuses available with them as well. And they've taken one rider away, the mountain biker Ben Oliver from Rangiora riding for the Central Benchmakers Will Bike team. Yeah, they'll be wanting to use all of his energy up too. You can see there James Oram just leading him through as he come across. They'll be seeing how much gas this guy's got. He's obviously a good climber. The mountain bike guys always are. But Aaron Gate is full gas here on the front of this breakaway and he will be in top gear jamming it as fast as he can on this descent down towards the main road. Incredible to note here, there seems to have been no reaction from the main peloton, including the defending champion here. They've been caught off guard. Will we see a repeat of history here? We know that Vink has won it before, as has Gate here, as they enter with about five or six kilometres to go here, Doug. I think this is a serious move. Yeah, you can see Aaron Gate's determination. He has really planned this. I actually thought he did a great job of ambushing the transport engineering tallies team by jumping them on the uh, approach to that Broughton Street. They're all over the other side of the road. They've opened up a sizeable gap. It's not a lot of energy expenditure at the end of this stage, so he's making maximum gain out of this particular effort, and they'll be wanting to drive all the way through to the finish, not worrying about who wins the stage. He needs the time. It's all about time here as they enter onto the state highway, and the two teammates team up towards the front. Now, Oliver, he's in an interesting position here. He knows that these two here, one of them is going to try and take the challenge. One's going 
going to try and lead out early potentially. He's got to position himself in such a place that he can get the jump on them. But the odds are against him, that's for sure. Yeah, a, a wise bet would be to sit on the back of these two and try and gap them. But Aaron Gate has got a very, very strong finish. He's got a track background, of course, and his other teammate, uh, James Oram. Well, he's a class act as well. So Ben Oliver's stuck in the, in the meat and the sandwich here. The, the poor lad uh, from Central Benchmakers will bike, but he's just got to keep driving. He'll be thinking about his overall place as well too, Julian. Yes, the general classification here could see a big shake-up here on the first official road stage of this year's tour. As Oliver now tries to find himself which wheel he wants to go on to, a lot of switching going on. He's got two experienced riders here trying to challenge for the stage victory as Orem starts to roll towards the back of it. Gate coming towards the front, as you said, former world Omnium champion. He's a member of the team's pursuit. This guy's got some gas and Oliver will be very aware of it gate has just opened up full gas here and you can see that the, the uh, gap that he's just put on his own teammate Ben Oliver is really trying his best to start his back wheel but it, gate leads out he is super strong here. Aaron gate to the front here he's just powering into it and he's going to be just too strong for Oliver here as he secures a stage victory the first road stage of the 2020 SBS Bank Tour of Southland and it's Corbin Strong or power net for Invercargill as the man that comes through to lead the bunch kick. Olympian Aaron Gate puts himself firmly at the front of the race on the first road stage of this year's tour. A six second gap back to his teammate James Oram, while local hope Tom Sexton drops into third position at 14 seconds. Meanwhile Southland's Matt Zenovich after going on the attack all day long secures the Harcourt sprint ace with 25 points. Central's Paul Wright now moves into the Jesco Hydraulics King of the Mountains on 10 from Gate and Zenovich. Young Keegan Hornblow continues to hold on to the Henderson construction under 23 from Hartley Brown and Curry. While Glenn Hayden for the second day in succession continues to hold on to the Stonewood Home silver jersey from Odvin. Benjamin Ward was awarded today the Share the Road Ambassador Award. Black Spoke Pro Cycling Academy move into the lead of the Wednesday Cycles team classification by a mere 9 seconds from Business South and Transport Engineering tallies at 20 seconds. We sort of had a plan A, B and C depending on uh, how much the wind was going to come into effect and it just wasn't quite enough to, to do plan A so uh, we sort of went with plan B which was to try and light it up on the climb coming into town here and this is my forte I guess these flatter, flatter stages and then we've got James Oram and Luke Mudgeway waiting in the wings for the, the big climbs it's nice that James could take some of those um, bonus seconds today on that run into the line on, a, on the main rivals for the, for the climbs ahead. Last time I did this race was 2016 and I took the yellow jersey coming into Gore and that's when it was stage five and it's pretty special to come back and finish in Gore and take the yellow jersey again so yeah hopefully it's a, a sign of good things to come for the rest of the tour for Black Spoke. Follow the action from this historic race with live race updates, full results and pictures at www.tourofsouthland.com.